information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Podcast with Dominic Frisbee, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello and welcome to the Gold Money Podcast, hosted in association with Frisbee's Bulls and Bears with me, Dominic Frisbee. It's my pleasure on today's program to be talking to Jack England. Jack is the author of a new book. It's called Sword of Marathon, and it's a libertarian action adventure novel that takes place in ancient Europe around the time, I should say ancient Greece, around the time of the Battle of Marathon. Now, Jack England is, of course, the nom de plume for our very own Andy Duncan. Andy, you've written this book. It's great to be interviewing my fellow interviewer. Welcome to the show. Um, why don't we start by, uh, why don't you tell us, give us a bit of background to sort of Marathon. How did it happen? Why did you do it? Well, first of all, it's very strange to be on the other end of a conversation rather than one asking the questions. The background is that we see a lot of uh, Austrian economics, big, heavy, thick books, and uh, they're, they're quite inaccessible to, to get into for most people. So I thought what I could do is I could write some kind of much more of an entertainment thing to help draw people into the ideas of, of sound money and liberty and all those kinds of things. And I've always been a huge Patrick O'Brien fan uh, with the Master and Commander series and so on, and also Lord of the Rings with uh, with Tolkien. Uh, and, of course, those two guys aren't around anymore to write any more novels for me to read. And also the Flashman novels by George MacDonald Fraser. George MacDonald Fraser's not around anymore. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll write a kind of combination myself to entertain myself. So there's a lot of Flashman in there. There's a lot of rude behaviour with, with young ladies. The, the hero of the book is actually a, a character from Northern Europe who's involved in the amber trade. And he comes down to Greece and he's tall and he's muscular and he's a rower. Uh, and all these ladies in Greece just uh, are all over him. So that, so we've got a lot of uh, Flashman action going on there. Uh, he's also been trained in, in a kind of pre-Viking Gothic war band, so he knows everything about weaponry. So there's plenty of swords, and his brother's a really good archer, really good bowman. He comes down with his brother called Hal. The main hero is called Luke. And they come down, and, and then they somehow get involved in the in the Greek-Persian conflict. Uh, and, uh, and and we go from there. But anyway, I thought that I'd write something that was exciting and adventurous and had some history in there and was very much in the kind of tradition of Patrick O'Brien, Bernard Cornwell and J.R.R. Tolkien. You say Tolkien is a, is a libertarian novelist then? Tolkien is an anarchist. Uh, if you read any of the later writings of Tolkien, Tolkien himself was actually a believer in a totally voluntary society. Uh, and what you can see The Lord of the Rings as um, is an allegory where he says Sauron is the state. The ring is the ring of power of the state. Uh, and everything that the West, you know, if you look at the Hobbit, the Shire, I mean, where's the state there? I mean, there's one overweight mayor who comes out once every five years and goes back into his Hobbit hole, and that's it. Everything else in the Hobbit, which Tolkien's trying to defend, is completely a voluntary society, you know, a, a kind of perfect version of England, I suppose, uh, with, without the police, without the government without uh, speed cameras, without people hectoring you. So Tolkien definitely was uh, hugely liberal. Okay, very good. Now, I, I, don't, I, I mean, I've started reading it. I'm about a third of the way through, and I'm enjoying it very much. Tell us how you've, I mean, you, you, you tell us why you wrote it, and, and how, how long did it take you to write? Well, I mean, I wasn't doing it full time because I have a business uh, to run and everything. It took me about, I'd say, 18 months to write the first draft. If I'd been doing that full time, it probably would have taken between three to four months uh, to write the first draft. Then the second draft, again, took probably another um, another 12 months. But if I'd been doing it full time, it would have taken another three months or so. So if we use kind of full time time frames, six months, seven months or whatever, but actually in reality, in real time, probably about two, two and a half years. So you're, you're doing it to... to to spread the libertarian word through the, through the medium of action and adventure. Um, I think this is going to turn a lot of people on. It's got, as I say, swords, fighting, beautiful women. Oh, fantastic, beautiful women. I actually enjoy rereading the novel. <laughs> Isn't that vanity to be... Uh... Uh, no, I just like it. Like I said, with Patrick O'Brien no longer around and uh, there's no more Lord of the Rings books coming out and there's no more Flashman novels, so uh, one, one must entertain oneself. <laughs> Very good. Now, um, you're obviously an extremely well-read chap. 
is it Ayn? Is this something of the Ayn Rand? She was a kind of libertarian novelist. I I would say so. Yes, that there are. I, I've, I've reread it recently, and I see actual without realising it, unconscious references to various uh, kind of Randian ideas. So there's lots of gold in there. Gold is money. I mean, there's silver as money as well. So there's amber trading going on. There's a, you know, One must stand up and fight. So we've got the Persian Empire coming in to try to destroy Athens, and the Athenians must choose to stand up and defend themselves. So they, they actually, it's good because I get the opportunity to do a bit of Hoppian analysis on the early democracy in uh, Greece, and we discover, strangely, that even in those very early days of democracy, because it's about exactly that time when Greek democracy is getting going, that there are problems and there are corruptions within a Greek democracy. So... Uh, there is a little bit of rand in there, but it, it, it's not too much. Like I so said, it's mainly um, it's mainly action adventure, and it's it's kind of tied together with this theme of you must stand up to defend yourself. And, and is there any speculation in junior mining companies in the book? There is a little bit actually, because we've got this uh, early Athenian kind of silver mine, but it's more about trading. Because what we've, we've actually got an early examination of the early banking system, which was based in uh, temples, and these temples would would you know you'd, you'd hand in some money in one temple, the Temple of Mithras in the Persian Empire. They would then send a message to a Temple of Apollo, which was an allied. A temple in Greece because it was the same god. Mithras and Apollo were the same god. And then you could go without carrying the money yourself. You could then go to Greece and, and take out your money from the store there. So the, the early temples were a very much um, a, the early banking system. The, the Persians invented the check. So the, the check was a Persian invention for transferring money from one place to another. So there's uh, we've got more amber trading in the book than, than silver mining or gold mining, but uh, we've got one guy going up these rivers in Russia trying to get the amber from the Baltic, and uh, we've got trading with Rome going on and a few of the uh, bits and pieces as well. But there's a lot of silver, a lot of gold in there. Very good. It sounds sounds like it's going to make a great film one day as well. It's actually that a couple of reviews on Amazon have actually said that. They've said, I'd love to see this as a movie, and I, I, I think I'm quite a visual thinker. I think I think in a very visual way. And I kind of naturally drawn up vistas and wide panoramas and, you know, descriptions of the Persian army or, or the Persians, the descriptions of the Greek army coming towards, running towards the Persian army. It's the first time anyone ever ran into battle. That was to get under the Persian arrow storm. So it, it is quite a visual book and one day who knows it might become a movie well fingers crossed and do you have a scene where the guy makes the the famous run where he runs the 26 miles or whatever it was to deliver the message well there's a little bit of a joke in there because it was actually the entire athenian army which did that before the battle one guy actually uh, i think phidipides was his name or Philippides, actually ran from Athens and ran down to Sparta and then to say to the Spartans, can you hurry up, please, and come and help us? Now, the Spartans, um, who knows why, but they, they, were, they were in a religious festival called the Carnea, and so they were going to be delayed. Anyway, he runs back. Now, that was about 150 miles round trip, and he did it in a couple of days, and he was fine because he was a professional athlete, an Olympic runner. But the actual distance from Marathon to Athens was 26 miles, but the, the, the Persians got onto their ships to sail around to invade Athens from the sea when they got held up at Marathon. And so the, the Athenian army had to do a speed march back to Athens to get back in time to, to cover off Athens from the sea to stop the Persians kind of invading from the sea. So it was, it was actually the entire Greek army which which did the 26 miles very, very quickly. But I do have a little bit of a joke in there about this. I've, I've got the other guy called either Philippides or Phidippides. I kind of get the two mixed up myself. And he does actually die from uh, things in the book, which is to do with this guy dying at Marathon, you know, announcing the Battle of Marathon. But it's not, it, it, it's a kind of a bit of a, bit of a humorous uh, little section in the book, which I won't spoil too much for anyone who's going to read it. Okay, excellent. Uh, Andy, now you have decided to go down the self- publishing route with it so why don't you tell us how we can buy the book and and also why you chose that route well i wanted the strangely enough before we get to that the, the reason i wrote it as jack england's i find it much easier to to be i let let creativity out of myself as, as jack england so when i'm writing when i am a writer i'm a bit like john le carre who isn't really called john le carre but he is john le carre when he's writing and i'm the same when i'm writing i'm 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 jack england so that that was a way to enable me to to let things out, which I I couldn't possibly. So, so there's some quite rude scenes in there with the ladies, and there's some quite violent scenes with swords and spears and so on. So uh, that was why I had to do um, that. 
the self-publishing route was because I wanted to have complete control over this. I'm very much a fan of Jeff Tucker's idea that we shouldn't use gatekeepers to process information. In this age, in this modern age, we should take responsibility for our own kind of information. And I didn't want publishers to maybe publish it for a couple of years. And then because it didn't make lots of money for them, take it off the shelves, retain copyright. And then my work, which I've spent all this time creating, then just disappears and dies and, and is never, ever seen again. I want this book to be around in 30, 40, 50 years. So I didn't want to kind of sacrifice it to the publishing industry. I also thought it'd be a good uh, way for me to learn about marketing and a good way for me to learn about how to promote things. And it's nice because I can do an audio book myself. I'm going to, I'm going to do an audio book soon. My, my, I'm hoping my voice coach will be the fabulous Dominic Frisbee for that. And then I'm uh, going to, you know, if, if somebody makes me a film offer for the, for the book, then, then I will get all of the benefits from that and it won't be 90% goes towards the publisher. Very good, very good. So how do we buy the book? Well, it's mainly available on Amazon. You can uh, get the print version. Now, I make a very, very tiny amount of money on the print version. It's, it's mainly so you can get it if you want it because I know people uh, like print versions. So I've tried to price everything as low as I can. Uh, the main way, though, I think people are buying things these days is via Kindle. I mean, I've read one study that some, these days about a thousand books are being bought for every one paper book of, of Kindle against paper. So it's available on Kindle all around the world. It's just 99 pence or 99 cents or 99 euro cents. Wherever you are, it's 99 things. Again, I priced it as low as I could because I wanted lots of people to read it and I wanted it to be accessible to a wide wide audience I, it should also be available on smashwords for anyone who's into that kind of thing and i'm hoping via smashwords um, they can then republish the book for me on ibooks and nook and sony and a few other things but that's not quite happened yet but it's definitely available on amazon definitely available on kindle just search for sword of marathon and it should pop up and 99 it'd be the best 99 pence you've ever spent in your entire life <laughs> very good it's the cost of two mars bars that's it and uh, what we'll do folks as well as we'll put out a link on the on the home page of the site well andy what else can i say I, I i would like to just say i've been listening to some of your interviews and uh it's great to have you on board with gold money you're doing a fantastic job you've had some really interesting guests on the show and you've been asking them really good questions and putting really good podcasts together i, I think you know, the little gold money podcast unit. We've got three great people working on it now. I, I include myself in that. And uh, I think, yeah, we are well placed in the libertarian podcast field. I think we are fast becoming the premier libertarian podcast team. Well, it's great. I mean, I've had the opportunity to speak to Ron Paul and uh, speak to you, of course, and, and lots of other fantastic people. So I'm really enjoying it at the moment. We're getting very incestuous, me interviewing Alistair and then you interviewing me. I think uh, Alistair has to interview you and then we'll have the, the, the entire triplet all kind of sorted out. The threesome will be complete. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Duncan, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and welcome once again. And the book is Sword of Marathon and the author is Andy's alter ego, Jack England. It's available on Amazon. Andy Duncan, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section. Music.